I am blonde, but it is all bleach. But I'm not going to talk about Goldilocks. I'm going to talk about, um, I was supposed to be a little bit later in the day, but we did switch. The good news is I'm here to talk about the research that you do and how we actually put it into practice. So if any of the researchers out there wonder if anyone reads your papers and actually does anything with them, that's what my talk will be about. Um, we are a small but mighty group. We have three full-time staff. We have a contractor, and we have a terrific PR firm that we work with on many of our materials. We don't have a lot of money to focus group test. We pour through the research. So when it comes out, we tend to take the um, information that is, that, is being, that, we're, that is out, and then we actually, if it's a CDC report or if it's um, I, I, and everyone, you'll see a couple of studies that I'll show here. We um, take about two days of conference calls to talk about the research, and then we actually end up um, you know, asking questions. We're constantly annoying the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention with our questions. Um, if there's something on pertussis and we don't understand it, we'll delve into it and we'll say, uh, you know, this is counter to this. We're not sure how we're supposed to do our next program. So your, your, so your work is so important to us. And so I'm really going to show you um, almost an assault on your senses of the materials that we've created using much of the research that you're all here doing. Um, we have a very um, wide mission. We actually brought in our mission this year to focus on families. So although we're called Every Child by Two, um, the, the organization started by vaccinating, by trying to raise awareness of the importance of vaccinations for children by the age of two. Um, that was really um, in the era of um, the early 90s when there was the outbreak of measles and people didn't really understand that they were supposed to be vaccinating by school age. Um, that is not um, in anyone's fault, but we will say that um, Mrs. Carter and Mrs. Bumpers, our founders, worked very hard to pass the state laws that require children to be vaccinated in the U.S. in order to attend school. That made people think they could wait till their children were five. Hence the outbreaks of measles and hence the reason why they started Every Child They Too. So um, we do, uh, we have a very big, we have a very big audience. We work with legislators, we work heavily with the media, and we also have a very big um, audience with the public. So we have to be very broad in our, in our reach, but we have to consider all of our audiences in the materials that we create. So I'm going to talk about mostly about the audience on the left, um, but we do have a separate website, which is www.ecbt.org, which is really focused for our legislators. Um, we do send the media there a lot. Um, we started that page uh, years ago when we were in the midst of the anti-vaccine media hysteria with Jenny McCarthy. Um, we put all of the research in there, and so we tend to send the media there quite a bit. But on our left is our new um, focus on vaccinate your family, and that's where really where I'll hone in on today. I don't have to tell you that things are changing. They've already changed. People are seeking information online. There's no question about it. As hair-raising as it is, it means that we have to be there. Taking the research and turning it into English or whatever language you speak, um, you know, understandable, quantifiable information that people can truly, under, really, truly understand in order to make proper decisions for their families. So how do we take um, all of the research and turn our Vaccinate Your Baby program, um, which was developed again in 2008, really at the cusp of um, what I call it Jenny McCarthyism, when the media was looking at all of the anti-vaccine questions, um, you have to remember our, our Congress was looking at the question of safety. We had a very anti-vaccine, sorry, I, I know I'm not supposed to use that word, but I do it all the time. We had a legislator that was very anti-vaccine and he was having hearings, bringing in Wakefield, um, making it all look very credible. I was extremely pregnant at the time. I was actually getting concerned because I didn't understand the science. Fortunately, I had people like Walt Ornstein to ask questions of, um, Bill Fagey, and they talked me off, they talked me down. They, they helped me understand what thimerosal was. And the impetus of um, the creation of Vaccinate Your Baby was we needed to know, I, I knew where the information was, and I didn't think it was fair that families didn't have access to it. The data was out there. We're smart enough to read it. We knew that most of the people who were declining vaccinations were fairly educated. So we put everything on that site that we possibly could. And then we got lucky with, I don't have a timer. Is there a timer here? I know I have 20 minutes, not 10. Okay. So just let me know when it's 10, okay. and I'll be good. Um, we were very fortunate to get an actress named Amanda Pete, who is, we call her the salve to Jenny McCarthy. Um, she went to Columbia, she was very educated, and she got us a ton of media attention. So we were able to get out a lot of the factual information. So this focused mostly on the safety of vaccines, and the, the site itself 
really did um, hit you right in the face with what are, are they safe? Um, what, what's in a vaccine? Why should I vaccinate? But we, it's very heavily focused on the safety and we know now that it's not necessarily the best thing to do to hit people first with safety, but instead to tailor your messaging. So what I'm going to do is talk about how we, how we retailored and redid our entire site, expanded to vaccinate your family using the evidence. So this is our new site, um, Vaccinate Your Family. It launched in, 20, in December, just, just, just this past December. Um, we have doubled our Facebook likes in that time. Um, so we're up to 201,000 currently. We, um, we, every, all the materials that we have, we have on our actual site. We also promote the materials of many, many other organizations, all of the CDC materials, um, um, the, the groups on the aging, we're starting to help promote their information. And more and more they're coming to us because they're realizing how broad our audience is. This is our actual Facebook page, Vaccinate Your Family. And um, I'll tell you that um, I couldn't fix the like thing here, but it's up to 201,000 now. Our biggest audience is obviously our America. Our second is Australia. And our third is, I would think Canada, but it's actually India. So we do get quite a few questions from folks from all the way over in India. We also have a larger umbrella, of course. We have our, our blog, um, which provides, we were able to put a lot of evidence-based information on our blog, and we have two Twitter feeds. So just wanted to let you know we are broader than just what I'll talk about today. So when we decided to, when we started to consider whether or not we should be changing the way we do things, we wanted to know whether or not it was even important still. Are parents still worried? Is our audience still relevant? And this study <clears throat> showed that it was published in pediatrics. In a typical month, 93% of physicians were reporting that parents were still questioning whether they should spread out vaccines. So here we were trying to decide, we're a very small organization. Do we even have the money and the time to redo everything that we're doing? But this showed to us that, yes, it was still necessary. The physicians really still are asking for our help. The Academy of Pediatrics is saying that parents are questioning before they even get into the office. So they're spending a ton of time trying to talk people into vaccinating, and they were, they're truly looking to organizations like ours and many others to help before they get in the office. Now, this study talked about, and I'm sure many of you have seen this, um, it talked about um, the different types of interventions that, that you can conduct and whether or not they're effective. So the CDC study um, that was printed, well, Gary Fried, I'm sorry, it wasn't CDC, it was a Michigan study with Gary Freed. They took information from the CDC. Um, the first set of, of people were shown information explaining the lack of evidence that MMR causes autism. The second group saw textual information about the dangers of the diseases. So diseases, measles will kill, blah, blah, blah. And the third group saw images of children who have had diseases prevented by MMR vaccine. And the fourth group received a dramatic narrative about an infant who almost died of measles, which we use quite often in our materials. What was found was so surprising to us. Refuting the claims of the MMR autism link, it did, it did help them understand that there was no link to autism, but it also decreased their intent to vaccinate. And images of sick children actually increased expressed belief in the vaccine autism link. So even though it had nothing to do with autism, this, these images of sick children resulted in people having more fear of vaccines, in, 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 basically. And the, what really scared us was that they said that all the current, well, not all, that current public health communications um, may actually help be helping to increase misperceptions about vaccination. So now we knew we really needed to make a big change in how we were going to do that. The one thing that did make us feel a little better was that rather than confronting parents about their deeply held beliefs, they talked about doctors were better empathizing, talk about their own children. I vaccinate my child and I feel safe doing that or my grandchild. And so we tried very hard to do a good job at um, using empathy in our own page. Now the National Academy of Science study um, stated that providing scientific evidence refuting the myths, again, was ineffective in countering but highlighting the factual information about the dangers of the diseases can positively impact people's attitudes. And finally, the only other study I'll cover for today, oh, actually, I think I have one more from Cornelia, um, was a survey. Now we were thinking, all right, we're going to rebuild. Where do we start? 
these are the these are the areas that we hit with our most frequently asked questions and we already knew this we have frequently asked questions we have a whole list of them we have to constantly answer the same questions over and over again on our social media so it's the same old thing they're worried about complications they fear autism still um, they're concerned about the ingredients screen the vaccines etc cetera, etc cetera. and what did the folks say um, what did the providers say would be most helpful they felt that better information from the media, which is a big audience of ours, um, elimination of non-medical exemptions, which is another thing that we do work on, um, better parent education materials uh, would be very helpful. So here we go. When it comes to the media, if you see a story on the news in America, we have not always, I would say about 60% of the time, helped to prepare that story. So if there's an outbreak, um, the media will all head for the hills and they'll ask us, do we have a parent in a needle in a haystack who lives in Indiana who happened to have gotten measles? Um, they'll want parent stories, but they also want the factual information. So we've developed um, a terrific relationship with the media. And I have to say, I mean, I think everyone in America would agree, the media in America is definitely much more scientifically focused now. They're not, there's not the hysteria that there used to be. I think, I think they're reporting on the science um, more and more. But um, doing, you know, getting to that spot was a, was a big challenge. And so the way that we've really um, focused on creating our new sites and our, all of our materials now are using that bite snack meal approach. So we're doing a little bite. You can imagine what it means, obviously. So some people just want a little bit of information. We don't want them coming to our page and being hit with, are they safe? We want them getting the general information. And then the people who want more will get a bit more of a snack. They'll get a little bit more information. And those who are the... The, the big information seekers who want all the details will have to drill a little bit farther into our site and that, that'll be their full meal. So again, this is our homepage. So we have the pregnancy section, baby child, preteens and teens and adults. And when you drill in, this is our baby child section. It looks different obviously on a, on a website, but I wanted you to see the full page. You can see um, the general top part is just the importance of it. Then you would go into um, why, um, why should I vaccinate my child? Um, which vaccines should they get, um, for more information, FAQs, et cetera. And then you can see on the left, we have all of our preventable disease stories. Um, if Tara said one thing yesterday, I absolutely agree. It's all about the stories. The stories um, are so impactful, and we have many families that are at the heart of every child by two. Families that actually work with us, who helped us develop our, um, our, our, our whole concept, They've come to us. Um, our first family that came to us saw Oprah Winfrey. Jenny McCarthy was on Oprah Winfrey. Her child had just died of pertussis. She gave her child pertussis. She said she was horrified to turn on the TV and see people saying they shouldn't vaccinate. So that really was part of the impetus of creating Vaccinate Your Baby in the first place. So we use our personal stories, but you can see our imagery is, is much more positive. We used to have this, the photo of the child in the hospital with all the needles and the and the wires. So we're finding more and more that people do respond to the positive imagery. Um, and so that's what we're trying to do, but still get those stories in. So when you drill into why should I vaccinate my child, again, it's positive. I don't know if you can see it from the back, but it talks about your children are vulnerable. Many diseases are still out there. So talking about the impact still. And really positively in the bottom, it says you have the power to protect your family. So making people feel proactive. I, I can do this. I, I have the ability to do this. And it's a good thing for me to do. Sorry, this is a little closer. And then on the side, you can go to any of the diseases. So that's a different section, but that's where you would click on each disease. And I'll, I'll go in a little bit about how, um, how we show the disease impact. Um, and then the answer to the FAQs, they could also go to. There, you'll get a lot more safety things. So are, are they safe? What's the ingredients? Should I separate them? This is our ebook, and I'm showing you this now. It's it's. It's a, I have a copy of it in the back, but generally speaking, it's electronic and we don't print it because we don't have the funding, but we don't really want it to be printed. We embedded it through our entire site. So you, I'm gonna talk about the visuals on the left, how we take stats and dummy them down so that they're, they're more understandable to folks and they're more palpable. So this would be the inside if you, if you had clicked on meningococcal disease. We take the stat um, and we break it down. Approximately one out of every 10 people with meningococcal disease will die. And then we talk about the symptoms, prevention. We always click to the immunization schedule. Everywhere in our site, it's about when should I vaccinate? You should vaccinate on time. There's only one schedule. There's no alternative schedule. There is the schedule. So you'll see this in all of our materials. This is a snapshot of it. This is how we use it on Facebook, Twitter. 
We have to obviously um, do different types of um, modifications to make them more shareable. We find that these are shared at exponential speed around the country. They, people love these types of videos, these types of um, pieces. So when we do something on flu, we'll try to do an interesting infographic with each one. Although I'm now thinking about that whole piece about how many will die. I have to really look into more of that. I think you're right. I don't think people think that will ever happen to them. So what, what is the impact of just the flu? what Angus was talking about. This is our State of the Immunion program. So um, as we're in our election process, we thought it'd be interesting to do a State of the Immunion. So right now, every month, we do a different disease, and we do a, a variety of different information about it. So we have our visuals for each disease, um, breaks down the, the, the burden, but then we do our impactful stories. So if it's HPV, we'll have a personal story, we'll have a video. Videos are shared at a much higher rate than anything else. Um, we put a video up the other day, it got 550,000 views in a week. So we know, and they're not our videos, we'll share anybody's videos if they're credible videos. Um, so we're, we're finding more and more the way that we um, package stories, um, the personalization is better always, and the different, we find that if you have to hit them with different types of, we'll put the same story out in just three different ways and they'll be shared in three different types of ways. This is our Manage a Cockle page. Um, we do our blog posts, which um, we, we hire, um, we, we usually feature stories of families um, who have either lost a child to Manage a Cockle. We have many survivors that we work with, with the National Meningitis Association, who are always looking forward to um, posting their stories on our blog. Uh, this is our pregnancy section. You can't see, but at the bottom there would be Tdap and influenza. So you would go into detail and you'd dig in and you'd find out how important it is, how a woman's body changes during pregnancy and how important it is for them to get vaccinated. And this is our preteen and teen. And as you can see, we're trying very hard to normalize HPV. So it's just right in there in the middle, Tdap, HPV, influenza, meningococcal. Um, we do the personal stories again on the left. Um, and then um, we have an awful lot in there about HPV. We, we basically do answer the myths, but it's again, it's, in, it's embedded inside. Um, that's probably our greatest question on Facebook are the HPV questions. This is our influenza again. I know I'm, I know I'm barraging you with, with visuals, but, uh, and this is our, um, our resource section. It breaks my heart a little bit that all the vaccine safety pieces are in there because we work so hard on that. Um, so to not have the data right up front, it kills me a little bit, but I understand that that's the way we're supposed to go according to your research. So there it is hidden a little bit in the back. This is our 50 plus page. And with the 50 plus, we're trying a new um, way of getting to them. We are working with a lot of different organizations, um, trying to help them understand they're going, to be, they're going to be grandparents, making it a little more pleasant. There's an awful lot to think about, and don't forget they have to get vaccinated as well. How long am I? Excellent. This is our, um, these are our, our ads. We actually have free advertising around the country. We were chosen by the Outdoor Advertising Association of America. We get free placements. We just have to pay for the actual posters. So they're, in, they're on buses around the country, in malls, airports, um, all over the highway. Our no kisses, not vaccinated, no kisses is our most popular. People are constantly seeing that on the highway. And we have a campaign that we do. We, have a, we, have a, um, we do a fun thing on Facebook. If you see one and you send it to us, we'll send you a gift. So don't get in an accident, we tell them. Pull off somewhere safely. But again, it's very positive imagery. Um, that's our most popular, and our second one is the suitcase and Hannah. And that's actually in the airports, which I was surprised they'd want to include that. Um, this is our social media manager. I just wanted to give her a shout out because um, the, le the next piece I'm going to talk about in the next three minutes is how we use the research to respond to folks on Facebook. Many of you have seen this information. Um, it came from Medscape, and it talks about the different types of people that are out there. It's incredibly hard to hold your tongue when someone is on your Facebook page and they are asking questions in a certain way that you think is trying to get you to be to to feed into the anti-vaccine conspiracy. We call them trolls, um, but some people have true questions, and so we have to be very sensitive in how we approach them. So this is actually laminated and it sits on all of our desks. And Christine, it te tells us all the time, you didn't do it right. This person had. A question, they're the group that looks at, um, they, their left brain thinker, for instance, number six, how do you approach them? Give them all the data they want. They don't necessarily need the wishy-washy. They want to know the facts, so hit them with the facts. When it comes to the denialist, which is number one, 
Um, they really disbelieve the accepted scientific facts and despite overwhelming evidence. So very sensitive with them. Provide them all the materials. Solicit their questions. Why aren't you vaccinating? And we have found, as Tara has mentioned, it does take sometimes months to talk someone into vaccinating, but it is so worth it. We've had so much success with bringing people in. Many of the Facebook groups that Tara had mentioned, um, we're really proud that they've met each other on our page, on our Vaccinate Your Baby original page, like Voices for Vaccines. These are people who met together on our page and started their own pages. So these subgroups are being created. And the more that we can understand how to approach the families, the better we are at encouraging them to vaccinate. Um, these are, these are more evidence-based information. We're doing a lot of research on how our ads are, are working. And we're finding that, again, the more, well, except for the funny face, she's the best for us. Um, but the more pleasant the um, photos are, the more they're shared. And I told Saad I would go into this, but this is like a 40-minute lecture, so I won't do that. But if anyone wants our intel on what types of ads we found work, we're more than happy to share it. We just did another round. Um, and we're finding that um, we're getting a ton of impressions and likes from different ones. People don't realize it, but the woman in the middle, her baby is the one who died of pertussis. Um, that's not, these are her three subsequent children, but she was the impetus to our program. And so how are we doing? We started our advertisement in December and we are up 134% in our, in our Facebook followers. So we went from 75,000 to 201,000 in about six months. Um, that means we have an awful lot of new people on our page and a million extra questions, but it does mean that our reach is greater. We're reaching about, we believe around 10 million people a year with our messaging. Um, we think it will be more obviously as we keep growing. Um, our Twitter following with our advertisement has gone up 125%. And our impressions have gone up 147,000%. So advertising works. Um, using, I do truly believe that the re-imagery, expanding our audience to grandparents has been incredibly helpful. Our adult, um, adult, our adult Twitter followers are actually um, greater than any, and our male adult Twitter followers have increased, which was a real surprise to us because the majority of folks on our page are women. Um, you can see my Prezi. I know a lot of times folks don't know where to look for it. If you just go to Prezi.com and you search for my name, all of my presentations will come up. But I do hope that you'll join us on Facebook. Um, send us materials that you'd like us to share. We're happy to do that. And we hope that we'll increase our, our reach across the countries um, to different, you know, different nations. And um, any questions, I'm happy to answer them after this is over. Thank you so much. <laughs>